Right. Uh, I studied abroad. Uh, mm -hmm. I was taking classes at Cairo University. Mm -hmm. um, I, I specifically chose to go there. I chose not to go to the American University. Uh, oh. Cairo University is in the heart of downtown Cairo. Uh, it's actually on the, the Giza side of the city. Um, but it, you know, it's an actual, uh, it's an actual Egyptian university. Uh, I was, I was there with two other Americans on my program, and we were the only Americans we ever saw. There were plenty of Germans, there were plenty of French, uh, other Europeans, uh, but no other Americans that I ever met. Oh wow! Um, so it was a very authentic experience uh, in that in that sense. Uh, I lived in an apartment just about just about ten minutes away from the university. Uh, we walked there every day and walked back. It, it's, it's essentially the same mm -hmm. overall, uh, but th there's small differences. You know, there's, you know, there's armed policemen on every corner, you know, AK-47s, big guns. Um, but I never saw any violence out of them, but there is just kind of, you know, they're like just presence. omnipresent. Yeah. Wow. Just, you just get used to them after a while. Um, did, that uh, did that scare you? No, no, no. I guess you kind of knew that been. going in. Yeah, it's gonna be like you just that. don't, you know, you don't mess with them; they won't mess with you. Uh, yeah, li life in general in Cairo is is it's a very hectic city. It's very busy. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, just you know, constant movement, noise, pollution, everything. Um, <laughs> there, what, one of the things I had, one of the things I was not expecting was just like on my walk to the university every day. Um, there's no, there, there was no sidewalk. Well, it, there, there may have been a sidewalk, but no one used it. You know, it, was, it was dirty and polluted and generally useless. Basically, <laughs> the, the situation on the street was you'd have, a, you'd have a line of cars parked on each side. Then usually you'd have another row of cars double parked. Mm -hmm. Then you had about, like a, a bike lane here at UK, you'd had about that width of road where you would walk. You would walk on the road. <laughs> and and then and bicycles would share that and motorcycles would share that and every once in a while like a donkey or a camel or a horse would share that and then you had two rows of frantically moving vehicles uh, oh and with with by, with everything darting in and out so it was it was quite just walking just crossing the street was an experience well i made new american friends from the people in my program and also plenty of egyptian friends at the university uh, but one sh one thing I had no idea to expect, it was strange, was uh, probably about 80-85% of the Egyptians in my classes mm -hmm. were female. Oh, yeah. interesting. So I really stood out in classes because not only was I usually the only white person, but I was also yeah. one of the only <laughs> few men. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I'm interested in a career in international relations in the future, and right now it's the big thing you know mm -hmm. um, it's a I mean, Arabic is a critical language for the national security of the United States and so is knowledge of the region mm -hmm. um, so and, that, and that's and that's what I want to do so it's it's vitally important that you have some sort of experience there some sort of first-hand knowledge there there's uh, there, there's an understanding of it that you get by going there and by experiencing it firsthand and by speaking with normal uh, Egyptians and and just normal people at the, to the other at the other places where I traveled. Mm -hmm. There's an understanding that you get by actually doing that that you can't get just from reading a book, or there, you can't get just from sitting in class. But I, I think I think people hear they hear Syria, and that Syria especially is scary. Mm -hmm. I, I think mm -hmm. uh, I think it was included at one point as like a, a as the in the axis of evil or, or a state sponsor of terror or whatever, but. I, I think a, a, an overarching lesson that I learned was anywhere you go, there, there's a separation between a, a government and its policies and the people. You know, the people can be just the nicest people I've ever met, and we can and we can disagree with their with the Syrian government's policies. That's fine, uh, but that doesn't mean we have to you know demonize their people. The people in Syria were, were the were by far just unequivocally. The nicest people I've met anywhere. Uh, they were they, every single one. I did not meet a bad Syrian ever. Um, <laughs> uh, they, they were kind. They were courteous. They were welcoming. Just everything. I, I, I love the Syrian people. 
I mean, from, I mean, from educational opportunities that you wouldn't otherwise have to, um, you know, having worldwide friends, uh, everything. It's cool. it's invaluable. Yes, I I would I would wholeheartedly. Whether recommend. it's London, Paris, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. or Cairo, I wholeheartedly recommend that that everyone who can do it does it. Um, yeah, no matter where, you know, if you're if you're inter- if you're interested in Japan or China or Korea, and you couldn't care less about the Middle East, you know, that's that's fine, that's great. Have that experience. If you're interested in London, go there. But you you the experience is vital. I think for I mean for a variety of reasons. It, mm-hmm. It's a it's a it's a new perspective for you. Um, you, you, I hate I hate when people use this phrase. I think it's cliche, but you learn a lot about yourself. You honestly do, and I'm still trying to figure it out. I exa- right. exactly what I learned. I know I I know I grew as a person.